My name is John Michael Turner. I current re currently reside in Burlington, Vermont. I served with Kilo Company 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines as an automatic machine gunner. There's a term, uh, once a Marine, always a Marine, but there's also the term, eat the apple, F the core. I don't work for you no more. I served three deployments with Kilo Company, 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines, one of which was in Haiti, the other two were in Iraq, uh, in between Fallujah and Abu Ghraib the first time, and in downtown Ramadi at the government center the second time. Um, I do have some video footage and pictures that I'll be sharing with you. The videos that I do have, there are swear words in there, so those that are live feeding this, you might need to turn the volume down. Could we please play the first video? Play it. The video needs to get played, please. So this is going to be a video of um, my exo or executive officer at the time of Kilo Company, and in this video he stayed. Um, I think I just killed half the population of Northern Ramadi after red tape. Can you replay it, please? Can you please replay the video? Please turn the volume. I think I just killed half the population of Northern Vermont. Not the right tape. Don't let the fuck out of here. Let's go to the next video. Uh, this video is um, is the after effects of what my exo had stated. We had gone into a two hour long firefight and um, it was over for quite some time but he still felt the need to go ahead and drop a 500 pound laser guided uh, missile on it and this is the after effects of it. Thank you. All right. Upon arrival to Ramadi in March 2006, we had gotten our rules of engagement brief at Camp Ramadi. Uh, just after we had gotten that brief, brief our uh, first sergeant had pulled my platoon aside and stated, uh, if you feel threatened in any way, shape, or form, take care of the threat and we'll deal with it later. With that being said, mistakes were made on several occasions. Uh, one incident was uh, this guy we call Mr. Wilson. Uh, my post was Post Alpha at the government center in the southwest corner, and his house was directly across the street. We had a high suicide vehicle borne IED threat that day, and this car came running around the corner, and I fired one 50 caliber machine gun round at his direction, and it ricocheted off the ground through the floorboard of the car, through his shin, and then through the roof. Um, the car immediately came to a stop, and outside of the car came seven of his daughters, including Mr. Wilson himself. Or, can you please put in the, uh, the next picture? Uh, this is another video of um, a uh, laser, uh, laser guided bomb. Um, I'm sorry I didn't show that, but please play this. That was done on the uh, Ministry of Health building. This building was still in use. There were still people that went there. Um, and that was a missile that just went into it. But back to where I was going with uh, mistakes being made. Please go to the next picture. That is the site, looking down the site of a 50 caliber machine gun. For those of you who don't know, the round is about six inches long and the projectile is about an inch and a half long. There are many different types of rounds. Um, the one that was shot at Mr. Wilson 
was a slap round which has a polyurethane base and a titanium tip. When the projectile exits from the barrel of the 50 caliber machine gun, it spreads open like that. So it'll go in through your body, leaving a hole about four inches and exit, um, leaving you with nothing. This will bring me to my next point. When mistakes were made, we carry drop weapons. Please go to the next picture. These weapons right here were taken from the Iraqi police uh, back during our first deployment. And this is just an example that we would take their weapons and carry them around with us in case we did mess up and shot the wrong person. Um, what we also did was uh, any time we went into a household, we would take the firing pins out of the weapon. Um, every household is allowed to have one AK-47. Um, for their own protection, and by taking out the firing pins, the weapons would not fire, therefore they had no protection against themselves or us. Let's go to the next picture. This is what happens when you get hit with a 50 caliber. Next picture. For those of you who don't know, that is brains. Um, that was not my kill, that was one of my friends. But uh, that did happen on my deployment to Iraq. And afterwards, it just goes to show you that the, after the mistakes that we did made, we had no respect for their bodies afterwards. Um, please go to the next picture. No, not. That is a man's face. On, on April 2nd, 2005, at Abu Ghraib, we had a very highly coordinated attack on us. And uh, the next day, we went ahead and had to uh, search the premises for any remains. Um, and obviously, that face, or that part of the face, was found and put on top of a Kevlar so could, a picture could be taken of it. Next picture, please. This picture is kind of hard to see, but uh, we had a mortar attack at uh, Camp India, which was right in between Camp Fallujah and Abu Ghraib. And this was a 12-year-old worker who was building our camp for us, uh, and he took a piece of shrapnel to the head. Is there any way you can move that? Okay. Uh, next image, please. On April 18th, 2006, I had my first confirmed kill. Uh, this man was innocent. I don't know his name. I called him the fat man. Um, he was walking back to his house, and I shot him in front of his friend and his father. The first round didn't kill him after I had hit him up here in his neck area. And afterwards, he started screaming and looked right into my eyes. So I looked at my friend who, was, who I was on post with, and I said, well, I can't let that happen. So I took another shot and took him out. He was then carried away by the rest of his family. It took seven people to carry his body away. We were all congr congratulated after we had our first kills, and that happened to have been mine. My, C or my company commander personally congratulated me as he did everyone else in our company. This is the same individual who had stated that whoever gets their first kill by stabbing them to death will get a four day pass when we return from Iraq. There's one incident where we got into a firefight just south of the government center, about 2,000 meters. We had no idea where the fire was coming from and the way our rules of engagement were, pinpoint where the fire is coming from and throw a rocket at it. So with that being said, we still didn't know where the fire was coming from. And an 84 millimeter rocket was shot into a house 
I do not know if there was anyone in it. We do not know if that's where the fire was coming from, but that's what was done. Please go to the next image. This man right here was my third confirmed kill. As you can see, he was riding his bicycle. This, later on in the day, we went ahead and uh, we had CBS Laura Logan with us, but she was with the other squad. And so she wasn't with us. So myself and two other people went ahead and took out some individuals because we were excited about the firefight we had just gotten into and we didn't have a cameraman or woman with us. With that being said, any time we did have embedded reporters with us, our actions would change drastically. We never acted the same. We were always on key with everything, play, did everything by the books. Please go to the next image. No, there's one at the, well the guy, no. The, the man on the bicycle, he was left in the street for about 10 minutes until we realized that we needed to leave where we were and his body was dragged about 10 feet to the right of him where his body was thrown behind a rock wall and his bicycle was thrown on top of him. Another thing that we used to do a lot was recon by fire, where we would go ahead and try to start a firefight if we felt threatened in any way, shape, or form. There's one particular incident where we were working with the Iraqi army and the Iraqi special forces in downtown Ramadi, and with our squad and the Iraqi army, there was also lieutenant colonels, majors, first sergeants, and sergeant majors. Sorry, sergeants major. With that being said, the Iraqi army would go into the house, kick in the doors, and then go ahead and shoot. And there were loud, loud bursts of machine gun fire. We thought we were taking fire, but then we later found out that it was them. Um, house raids. <coughs> because we were a grunt battalion, we were responsible for going on several patrols. Uh, a lot of the raids and patrols we did were at the night, around 3 o'clock in the morning, around there. Um, and what we would do is just kick in the doors and terrorize the families. That was an image taken around 3 o'clock in the morning through night vision goggles. And that is uh, the segregation of the women and children and the men. Um, if, if the men of the household were giving us problems, we'd go ahead and take care of them any way we felt necessary, whether it be choking them or slamming their head against the walls. If you go back to that one picture, that was one man that wasn't taken, uh, that was taken care of in a very bad way. Because, because of all the, the wiring that he had, it would be considered an IED making material. Um, on my wrist, there is Arabic for FU. I got that put on my wrist just two weeks before we went to Iraq because that was my choking hand. And any time I felt the need to take out aggression, I would go ahead and use it. Please go to the next picture. Next. There's an instance of detainees and how they were treated in a nice manner. Next. That is the Fatimat Mosque Minaret. As you can see, it is written with bullet holes and holes in the top of it. Those were from mortars. And the next video that I'm going to show you is a tank round that went into that minaret where we weren't sure if we were taking fire or not. Uh, um, I'll, actually, I'll talk about this one. This is um, after uh, one, of, one of the guys in a uh, weapons company had gotten shot. Uh, this is a way that we would take out our aggression. For those of you who don't know, it is illegal to shoot into a mosque unless you are taking fire from it. There was no fire that was taken from that mosque. It was shot into because we were angry. Can you please play the next video?
We are on ice cream, trying to suppress the blue and white minaret name. Bonnie Mott Al Zara. Hellraiser, Hellraiser. Go ahead and take another tape around at that building over, at that mosque door. Another round, Kilo 2. Next image. That, um, okay. With that being said, um, there's many more stories and incidents for me to talk about, although we don't have the time to. But this just goes to show you that, oh, that was the after effect of the, the tank round. This just goes to show you that everyone sitting up here has these stories. And there's been over a million troops that have gone in and out of Iraq. So the, end, uh, the possibilities are endless. Next image, please. The reason I am doing this today is not only for myself and for the rest of society to hear, but it's for all those who can't be here to talk about the things that we went through, talk about the things that we did. Next image. Those four crosses and this memorial service were for the five guys in Kilo Company 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines that we lost. Throughout our, our unit, we had 18 that got killed. With that being said, that is my testimony. I just want to say that I am sorry for the hate and destruction that I have inflicted on innocent people. And I'm sorry for the hate and destruction that others have inflicted on innocent people. At one point, it was okay, but reality has shown that it's not, and that this is happening, and that until people hear about what is going on with this war, it will continue to happen, and people will continue to die. I am sorry for the things that I did. I am no longer the monster that I once was. Thank you.